Uh, so what I'm going to do is get straight in a little presentation to show you how to quickly find the phone number on the Admiral website. So here we go. Share the screen. Right, so firstly, going to go to the home page, and you can see there, the top left-hand corner is contact us and help and support. Now, a lot of people would think help and support, that's the one. So there you go. It's accessibility and support, and it's just loads of words, loads of choices. So we don't want that. So going back to the home page, and... The other way, as well as the top left-hand corner, there's also contact us there in this line there. So we're going to do that. And uh, you get a very perceptive little uh, marine character saying, contact us. You're looking for Admiral's contact number? Yes, I am. Anyway, uh, well, you, you know, you could do this, different ways, da, da, da. but obviously he's already asked, you're looking for our phone number. Yes, I'm looking for your phone number. So I'm just going to show you that again. I didn't realise it did a reverse bird. Anyway, um, so what it wants you to do, but it doesn't ask you to do, is to choose one of these. So this one is for motor insurance. Now that opens more words, yay, more options. And look at that, there's a button there, say go to my account. And then it says if you've already tried my account, you can select a product. So it does not say which of these, which one you want motor. And then the next one you want is car insurance. So it's right down there and it's not prompted you to choose which of these things that you want because you haven't found the phone number yet. So next you get to a uh, Admiral virtual assistant. Now nowhere on that screen does it say skip this to find other ways to contact us. It doesn't say that. And so I would probably type a question in there, how can I contact us? And it would start asking my name, my policy number, what I'm calling about, more delay, more barrier, more things. We're talking not just talking about neurodiversity here, we're talking about humanity, people, quick reference, busy people, preoccupied people. The quick thing that you have to do is massive voice discoveries, work out how to cancel your policy. So when you scroll down, because, you know, that's in the screen. and There's nothing to actually say there's anything below it. So then you've got, like, contact us. And, again, my account. It's already pointed to me my, to my account, so I've already got past that. So, obviously, I don't want to get to my account. Or br browse the FAQs. I'm not even going there. So I go to there on the right there. Give us a call. And you guessed it. No phone number on this screen either. How many clicks have we done? So... Um, you got my account. It's not taking the hint, is it? It's just, it's just not taking the hint. Uh, browse the FAQs. No, doesn't. And you've got charges and fees. Oh, you're going on the Edinburgh train that goes by Sheffield. Oh, we've got to Bristol. Oh, do you want to go to Wales? Oh, got to Birmingham. Do you want to go to Blackpool? No, I want to be on the train that stops at Sheffield in order to get to Sheffield. That's an example. You do not need to send people off in lots of different directions. So here you've got customer service and up comes the phone number. That needs to be signposted. So I was on chat earlier and you can see the bottom right hand corner there. I was on chat. I'm just trying to say, can you navigate me how to do it on the website? And then... The answer, firstly, should be you can't actually do it on the website. So, things. So the other, the other thing is like when you ask for help and support, it takes you to this page. Extra support, money wise. When people ask for support, they they just want a phone number most of the time. So of course, earlier on when I thought I could do this online, I went to the uh, website and I was asked to log it, log in. I can't remember my password. So I go and enter an email. I get to the email. I collect reset password. Boom. Invalid input. Well, I never. So I had to do that twice with full concentration. This isn't something you can do on the go at all. So anyway, I'm logged in. And 
I clicked, sorry, I'm thinking of leaving. And then you get into this process. And I can't do that process now because I phoned it up and cancelled my policy. But really, you 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 just just want to know how do I cancel policy? This is how you cancel policy. But anyway, back then I went in and it's asking me, where did I go? Money supermarket. What was the price? £316. Who offered it to you? The AA. And uh, basically, I took it. So nowhere are they asking me, you know, have you taken it? Um, do you still need your policy on the 20th of May? There's none of that. There's no signpost. It's just continue, you know, continue. And when you try and get out of the process, it says, do you want to cancel your cancellation? So, you know, it makes you feel that you should be in this process, but they're just trying to sell you back in. And so they're just basically saying, confirm and continue. And so if I press change, cancel changes, it's going to say, do you want to stop your cancellation? So it's just really confusing. So I tried FAQs. How do I not renew? No matches found, nothing. I also then tried cancel. And I don't want to cancel my policy because I've actually got five more days to um, of cover required. So there you go. I just wanted to just wanted to say uh if you want to not renew so firstly if you get a new policy from admiral at the time then you need to look out for and select not auto renew because it's very often you might need to have things to tell you about and you're responsible as a driver to disclose anything like uh you know the side click from the side of the road um uh you know like a speeding fine one of those Speed awareness courses, they don't really matter. There's also, you know, um, no claims bonus protection, all that kind of thing. So even though brokers really don't like um, aggregate sites, at least at the aggregate site, you can see what factors are influencing. So you can put in your um, industry working, you can work, you can put in, you know, what your, what your kind of work involves while you're driving, like social, business or commuting. And that all, this all makes a difference. And so rather with brokers pretty much like, well, the best we've got is 900 pounds. And, you know, they're not really interested to work out with you why it might be that much. You know, you drive 2000 miles a year, and the aggregate site now actually gives you a lot of information. And for somebody who in 35 years of driving like me, who's only, you know, like had one or two involvements in insurance and have been pretty much like not my fault. So I uh, don't really need a really expensive policy. It just needs to be legally covered. So there you go. Thank you very much. So...